Hello everyone, welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. And you know, during this global crisis, crisis that is known as the coronavirus, many doctors, scientists, and politicians are giving us their perspective about these crucial matters. But many Christians are yearning for a biblical perspective. The Lord told us there would be times like this on earth. So we are joined now by a group of pastors who have been seeking God for answers and have joined us with some biblical counseling. And I want you to meet them. This is a very interesting conversation we're going to have tonight. Um, first of all, we have with us Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church at St. Mary's, followed by Pastor Ty Watson of Salina First Church of God. Then there's Pastor Brandon Green of Celebration Church in Lima. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio a Statewide Ministry. Gentlemen, we welcome all of you to our program. Nice to be here. Thank you. Happy to have you, and we, we certainly want to hear what you have to say in the way of counseling to people who are in, in need of help, one kind or another, because it's affected so many lives. And that's the first question I wanted to ask you all. How has COVID-19 affected your ministry, reaching out to people, and how has it affected them as they come in from their own personal homes uh, to your sanctuaries? Yeah. Well, uh, we at Wayne Street and St. Mary's uh, have been in a big uh, um, learning curve on technology. I've become sort of an amateur IT guy learning about live streams and, and, and YouTube and, and all these things we had nothing new, I knew nothing about just six months ago. Uh, we've upgraded the computer system, you know, had to buy a new camera and all, all these different things, technology and equipment that we needed. And then to figure out how to use them was almost more difficult than actually purchasing them. Wow. But uh, just, just a way to be able to connect to people in their homes in ways that are safe. Uh, we did communion one week uh, where we had the little uh, communion cups with the wafers and, and we took them out to the shut-ins and we had communion in church. Uh, we have been back in church now for uh, about two months now. And uh, so we're able to do that. We were outside before that as many churches I knew did the outside services. And uh, just it's been been a real struggle because people are so detached now from everything mm -hmm. to be able to, to uh, have the church, which always has been a hub of the community, the place where people connected and came together to now not be able to have that for a while and now have it under, you know, different circumstances. Uh, we, you know, we, we, we have asked people to wear masks. We do social distancing and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just just to be able to maintain discipleship, to maintain connection with people, maintain connection with people and mm -hmm. between them. Uh, so that everybody knows that uh, the church, as I said, was always the hub where people connected. It still exists. We're still here. And uh, we want people to come back and, and find their connection uh, th through the Holy Spirit at our church. And uh, so we're just looking for people to, um, you know, realize they have that need and, and come forward. And that's been tough because, uh, you know, the rules have said for a while it wasn't allowed to happen. So mm. just to be able to connect people as best we can and, and have conversations. I do a weekly live stream uh, on Wednesday nights for people to come on and they talk to the chat and then I oh, talk okay. with me. And you know, so just as much as we can to get people together through technology has been the biggest thing we've done. So you're maintaining contact. As best yeah. we can, yeah. yeah. Ex mm -hmm. Excellent. Pastor Watson, at your, at your congregation over there, what, what's it like there? Yes, so uh, just piggybacking on what he was stating. Um, you know, during this season, we've just been stretched. Uh, I think we've done a lot of things that we've never done before. And, you know, obviously the online presence now exists in most churches. And that was the same thing for us. But as a church, we, you know, I've often said it, you know, we're, we're a uh, small church with a lot of people. <laughs> and so we want to keep that, that feeling close, you know, that closeness to one another. So mm -hmm. uh, despite, you know, those that may be uh, immunocompromised that, that have to stay home, we're still trying to always find ways outside the box to best love them or best love all people in our community during these trying times. So uh, I would say stretch is just a good uh, word for what we've endured. All right, Pastor Green, how about your, your, your congregation? Well, like many, um, that have this similar sentiment that we don't have problems. We have challenges because problems can be a little big. So we decided to face them head on. And so we did like Pastor Tim said, we were going to leverage technology and find creative ways to engage with people mm -hmm. and not lose that contact. Because at the end of the day, the storm has hit all of us. Just like in Paul's day, he's on his way to, uh, you know, court and there he finds himself in the middle of a storm but the angel of the lord comes brings a download and says everyone in the fellowship will be saved even though the ship is being affected mm -hmm. 
And so we really made it about the people. We really made it about engaging with them and finding uh, new ways, creative ways, innovation, you know, in order to maintain our connectedness in a safe way. And so we found that um, the best way to do that for us was to continue to air and stream our services. I was even on one of those cherry picker lifts on Easter Sunday. No kidding. Yes, I was. <laughs> and uh, we had uh, taken a radio transmitter from my house because we're crazy at Christmas time and we have <laughs> lights set to music. And so we brought that thing in and we were able to broadcast the service safely to all of our worshipers in the parking lot. And so now we are open and uh, we continue to find um, new ways to try to reach people with the love of Jesus. Excellent, excellent. And then you, Pastor Bird? Yeah, so for us, it was a great opportunity. Of course, when March hit and COVID was announced, you know, we called time out like everybody else did, sure. right? And then just really assess the situation. But for us, we found that there was still an even greater need and a greater awareness of a spiritual need. Mm -hmm. And so for us, like for example, my Bible app, sent out a message that says we've had 1.6 million new downloads of the Bible app since COVID hit. So that wow. indicated yeah. that there was a hunger. People sure. were searching, people were looking. And so for us, you know, in Matthew 5, 14, Jesus said, we're supposed to be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I said, wow, what an opportunity for the church at large to really reach out and help people that are searching. Yeah. And so for us, we called time out like everybody else did, and we called a huddle, right? Yeah, yeah. We huddle, what do we do? What are we going to do? And we have to respond, right? That's what the world is looking for. Mm -hmm. Honestly, whether they recognize it or not, they're looking for a response. They're looking for someone to step up and lead in truth. Right. And so that's a golden opportunity for the church to be that. Mm -hmm. And so we just begin to mobilize to help meet needs because there were more physical needs, more spiritual needs and needs everywhere yeah. that people were understanding. And the other thing was people were actually ready to pray See, that yeah. hadn't previously prayed yeah, very yeah, often. Yeah. So that's what we discovered is, hey, what an opportunity. If we can start with prayer, mm -hmm. our nation is so oh, yeah. in need of yeah. prayer. Yeah. And so we started right there. In one sense, uh, Pastor, it, it's almost like 9-11. Um, yeah. Because they say yeah. the Sunday after 9-11 hit, the churches were just filled with people. Exactly. Right. You know, that, uh, a wake up call. A right. wake up call. Well, thank God you, you're taking advantage of the opportunity. And, you know, Many people feel a sense of loneliness and isolation Absolutely. now because they're, they're so restricted in where they can go and what they can do. Um, I'm board chairman of a large organization back in Toledo called the Area Office on Aging, There's 10 counties it covers. And um, we're finding research has shown that isolation, the mm. impact of isolation mm -hmm. on a person is the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Really? Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, that's wow. what the research has wow. been showing. Wow. You have an awesome job to reach these people that are, that are isolated. Amen. And, and making the phone calls that you're doing, you know, those mm -hmm. wellness checks and all that. Uh, tell us a little bit about what people are saying. What are they saying as you make yeah. contact with them? What well, are they saying? I, I'm working with the Senior Citizen Center in St. Mary's, and every Monday morning at 9.30, we have a conference call with whoever wants to call into it, and a number of shut-in folks call in, and we have a discussion during that time. And, and the biggest thing they're talking about, at least the question that always comes back, and I'm sure it's stuff you, you guys have heard too, is, you know, what, what does faithfulness look like in the midst of this? Because normally, I mean, you know, <laughs> back BC before Corona, uh, <laughs> what, what was, it was all about faithfulness, was about going to church and, and serving. Well, we can't do that now or, right, or couldn't right. do that for a while. So, so what does faithfulness look like now? And uh, you know, you're, you're talking about the Bible that people were downloading. What, what, a, what a great testimony. You know, people were searching for that. Amen. You know, searching for the feeling of faithfulness because I think that's what sustains us. It's not so much, you know, yeah, do, doing things is great, don't get me wrong, but, but the, but the uh, experience of faithfulness and the experience of connecting uh, I think is what people were looking for. And even through that phone call, I, I've never even seen any of these people. They could be here in this room. I wouldn't know who they were because I've only spoken to them on the phone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But every Monday morning we have a connection and I know their names and they know me and we talk about the same, th you know, not the same thing every week, but we, themes come up and, and it just, it's, people are searching for that. They're hungry for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now jump in with any comments that you want to make. Yeah. You feel free to do that. Um, with, with the sense of um, vulnerability, yeah. What kinds of
counsel are you providing? What are you saying to people to, to get them to be calm? Some, pe some people are beginning to ask the question, you know, are, are we in the last days? Uh, has God really got a handle on it all here? What are you saying to people to comfort them? So are we in the last days? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I believe we are. Mm -hmm. Is this the end of the world? No, I do not believe it's the end of the world. Right. And right. so for me, I believe that you can take two different perspectives. And a lot of people, what you focus on will grow in your life. And then what you take the focus away from, it begins to shrink. So you can either be of the perspective, well, 2 Timothy 3 says that things are going to be terrible in the end times. But then on the flip side, the promise is in Acts 2.17 that God will pour out his Holy Spirit upon all flesh. It's a matter of perspective. And so for me personally, especially when the scary reports were going out and, and people were not coming off ventilators and we weren't sure which sources of news to trust, we had to really center ourselves on what is the promise of God? What does God have for us? Give us this day our daily bread. And so it caused us to dig deep and to really focus on the presence of the Lord in spite of the presence of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he promised? Mm -hmm. That he's going to mm -hmm. set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to either feast at his, in his presence at his table, or you can be taken off guard by what is surrounding you, the drama, the confusion, the yeah. chaos. Not to minimize what we've gone through, you know, as a culture. I mean, this has affected the entire world. Yeah. all of the nations of the world. It's interesting as a pastor to see friends that I have, you know, all over the world holding services through live stream with empty yeah. services. Yeah. That is very different. Yeah. But I do believe this, that the glory of the Lord has risen upon the church for such a time as this. Amen. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to hear more about that kind of situation. in the moment. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to continue right after this. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back now with our panel. And you know, we've been getting questions from our audience. We thank you for your questions. We've been soliciting your questions. But a lot of these questions are wanting to know, are we in the end times as a result of what's happening here? Uh, Pastor, could you expand on what uh, Pastor Green has already said about the end times? Yeah, the end times. The Word of God tells us plain and clear that no man knows the day nor the hour. Mm -hmm. Now, right. I don't believe that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't know what season we're living in. Mm -hmm. The Bible gives us specific signs, mm -hmm. and, and that's why if you personally ask me, do I believe we're li living in end times? Yes, I would say that. Mm -hmm. But I would also ask the question, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Because when I look into the Word of God, I see Peter, you know, we've, we've all heard the story about him getting outside the boat and, and walking on water, but it was the storms that started making him become fearful. It was the storms that started making him feel as if, uh, I don't know if I can do this. And when, when the storms encountered, you know, he encountered the storms, um, he took his eyes off Jesus. And I think as a generation, at least from a young person that is a youth and family pastor, I often ask people, do we, do we want a relationship with Jesus because we're worried about the consequences of possibly uh, dying without knowing him? Or do we want a relationship with him because we actually love him, and because we actually know him? Uh, we knew end times would come to pass. We knew these things would take place. But you look throughout the gospel message and everyone has paid a you know, has paid a price in following him. And so if this is our price that's to be paid, my best advice is to people, whether you're at home and you're not able to be in service or, or you know, whether you find yourself, your business has gone under, all these different uh, things that have occurred in their life, I think the best advice that I can give people is to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Mm -hmm. We may be here, but that doesn't change the facts that our eyes stay focused and are faithful to him during this season. Excellent. 
Pastor, you wanted to also comment on Pastor Greg? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because in, in Acts chapter 1, his disciples, Jesus' disciples, asked the same type of question. So literally in verse 6, it says, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel, right? And so they were asking the same question, yeah, is this yeah. the end? And of course, the infamous verse, verse 8, says what? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, mm -hmm. and you'll be my witnesses. So I love what he said. I love what he said. And it said this, by perspective, where, where, are, you, where are you focusing? So if our perspective is focused on Jesus, he's the mm -hmm. author and the finisher of our faith. It doesn't matter if the times and seasons are all lining up, but no man knows the exact hour. Yeah. But if we will stay focused and say, you know what, Lord, whether you're coming today or tomorrow or next week, next year, I'm ready. And he said in Matthew 25, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. That's no right. matter mm -hmm. what, we should mm -hmm. be prepared, fixing our eyes yeah. on Jesus, the author mm -hmm. and finisher. I'd like to speak to that as well because yeah. Um, within our church, we've heard for many years that Jesus is going to return. I remember being a little boy getting the pamphlet for the 88 reasons yeah. <laughs> why Jesus was going to return in yeah. 1988. Here right. we are, there 2020. You, yes. you know, the promise is Jesus says that we're told to occupy until I he come. comes. I'm a little tired of those who say, I know when he's going to be coming yeah. because it makes for selling good yeah. books. Yeah. It makes for yeah. selling all kinds of curriculum. Uh -huh. And so my encouragement is this, be rapture ready, but let's not be in a focus of, I'm looking for this rocket ship to take me up out of the world because it's so precarious. It's so terrible, everything that's going on, but actually you're focus is you're not occupying. He says in Ephesians 5, redeem the time for the days are evil. That means to make the most of it. Be productive. Go out there and take those talents that he's invested in your personal life. And I know it's a bit of a challenge, especially with social, uh, socially distancing ourselves, yeah. but oh, yeah. be innovative with that which you've received so that you can have a good return because in spite of when the rapture is going to take place, is this the end of d the days? You know, None of us can say for certain that we know, yeah, but we yeah. are all going to give an account for the way that we live our lives. And we're all going to have to stand up before the throne of God and yeah. say, Lord, this is what I've done with the things that you've given me to do. My time, yeah. my talent, my treasure. Excellent. Yeah, and, and to go along with that, um, one of the things I think that we, we miss or at least misuse about the end of time is one of the earliest writings on uh, the end of time uh, comes from the book First Thessalonians. Where, and there, Paul gives a, a section, it's where the idea of the rapture comes from. The very last verse in that, though, is one that we completely skip. And he says, therefore, encourage each other with these words. I love yeah. that, that one verse. I yeah, and, and, yeah, and I, I, we don't do that. We scare yeah. people into buying yeah, curriculum. Sure That's do. exactly right, what we right. do, which is entirely... Or Christian horror movies. Exactly. Yeah. And that is exactly what is not supposed to happen, yeah. because Paul was writing about it as a wonderful thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and not something to fear. And, you know, something to be prepared for, of course, like, like right. you guys said. But, uh, but it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to celebrate the yeah. fact that Jesus yeah. is returning. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a pretty good ending yes. to any story you could yeah. tell. So I, I think we would do better to be able to see it that way. I, and I love to teach on that subject. And I agree totally with you because, in fact, when I, when I teach on that, what I say is to people is I'm going to read you that one verse mm -hmm. first at the bottom of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I think it's verse 18. Yeah. And I say, I want to read that first before we get into it, because I want you to know that I'm not here to scare anybody half right, to death. Right on. Right. The Bible tells to teach this to encourage you. But yeah. he, here's another thing I think is important. He says to us two things. He commands, one, he tells us, don't set dates. Like you brought yep. up mm -hmm. a moment. He said, right. do not set dates. But the other thing he tells us, look for the signs. As I Amen. Said. Sure. I think I said that Absolutely. earlier. Absolutely. So we, we do have an obligation to look for those signs. He's telling us to do that because he wants us to know about that nearness. Yes. But we still must occupy right. till he comes. Yes. I mean, you can't despair. Oh, he's coming. So, you know, you, all, you just throw everything up and, and just let up thing, everything go up in the air and you're just not doing anything because we have to give an account of this time. 
Yes, and he's not going to be happy if our answer is, "Well, I was waiting for you. <laughs> right. yeah. I was right, right here doing the, and I, that." That's not going to be. But good. in the Judeo-Christian faith, you know, it, since Moses, he set the stars, he set the moon, he set the sun as signs for yeah. the seasons. Uh -huh. But all of these were all types and shadows pointing to Jesus uh -huh. Christ. Right, the feasts and everything are a culmination of the work of, that Christ would do. Uh, you know, as a minister, I have to remind people: the Book of Revelation is not a horror type uh, <laughs> book. It's the revelation of Christ. Amen. It's not the revelation of the Antichrist, Amen. not Amen. the revelation Amen. of 666 or the mark of the beast. They're but, in there, of course. But, but that's, that's the focus there. of yes. many Bible yes. teachers right. who capitalize off right. of people's fear. And that's concerning to me because I believe that God's got a bright future for the church even during this time where it's difficult, even where people are locked in their homes and, you know, behind masks and, you know, you don't know who's got the virus and, and it, we're making decisions that are important. It's important to realize that God has the best in store for you now. He saves the best for now. I believe that. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that always gets me about Revelation when you go back and read it is there's all this horror imagery and these crazy ideas and all that stuff. But if you go to Revelation, notice how long the fights take. There's this big buildup and then it's over. God says, done. It's, and if you go read Revelation time and time again, there's this big buildup, this fearsome beast comes out of the sea and then God tosses him in the lake of fire. I mean, it's like <laughs> all of the fights in there are right. very anticlimactic yeah. for the buildup. Right. You know, yeah. it, you know, if the Avengers would have beat Thanos that fast, we wouldn't have had, Thanos. that wouldn't be a movie, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, but the enemies go by so quickly. God has taken them out left and right yeah. without even breaking a sweat. Sure. And so, I love that there is a promise in the book of Revelation. Blessed is he who reads it. Yeah. Yes. Don't Amen. stay away from it. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there Absolutely. because we see our king. Yeah. yeah. It's the revelation, oh, the unveiling goodness. of our king. Yeah. Amen. That should make us excited. Yeah. Amen. Well, I think the sinner, the person that is without Christ, and I know that's a bad word for some people, and, and I don't mean it as a put down, sure. but the person that is without Christ is, is, is called that. Uh, I think they should be concerned. If they know, and if, if, if we're talking about these last days and we talk about the signs that point to the end, not that it scares anybody to be saved, because you can't do that. Right. God's looking at your heart. He knows All your right. motives to why that's you're coming right. to him. But the fact that God said it's not his will that any man should perish. That's right. right. See, he doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to know these are the last days and that, you know, if you haven't gotten your act together by now, please right. do so. Yeah, join the please, right. please do so, yeah. you know. Right. Go ahead. Uh, you, you have to understand eternity starts now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eternity starts now. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. start tomorrow. That's right. It doesn't start That's in right. three years. That's right. It starts right now. And so, you know, Romans tells us to present ourselves holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Right. I think it's so important for us to truly understand this, that I am not waiting until tomorrow to, in logic and science and everything else that comes out. I could die today. I could die today. Yeah. yeah. And so eternity starts right now in me knowing, number one, is he my center focus? Mm -hmm. Do I love him because of who he mm. is versus where I can go and what I yes. can get? Yes. Or am I just scared of dying and wondering what the consequence is? That'll sure. preach, you know? And so, That'll preach. yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the reality of where we've got to get to yeah. as, as a country, as a world of understanding that I love him because of what he did for me that I couldn't do. And because of that, I want to commune with him, not just in eternity, but eternity starts now in yes, my it home does. Yes, it this does. morning when I woke up. And the greatest thing about that is I don't have to worry about what everybody else is doing. I don't have to worry about what everybody else is saying. My relationship with God is an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's between me and him. And on one day, because there's coming a day, I will be judged, yeah. not based on yeah. what everybody else says, yeah. not based on what everybody else thought, yeah. but my relationship with mm -hmm. him. And that's where we have to keep it. That's excellent. Is that the way you preach in the pulpit? Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, Bill, the yeah. Bible says hope deferred makes a heart sick. Yes. And so what I'm seeing today happening, right, is those people without Christ, and you alluded to this a few mm -hmm. minutes ago, those people without Christ, their hope is being deferred. And then I begin to question, what is your hope in? Because as you mentioned, writings of Peter, Peter said that we should always be ready to give a reason for the hope that we have, right? right. We should be ready yes. to give a, a defense for that because our hope is solely in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what 
we rest in. That's why we have peace in the middle of these storms, in the middle of this chaos, whether you're locked into your home or whether you're, you, you know, you have a, a, a compromised immune system, whatever the situation mm -hmm. is that life has dealt you, we have peace and we have hope because of Jesus Christ. And this is what people need to know, don't yeah. they? Particularly those that are, mm -hmm. that are frightful That's in this right. time with COVID-19, it may come and get me, you know? There, there, there's one, there's one uh, uh, letter we got from uh, a viewer. She said that her parents don't want her to come around mm. because they're afraid. Yes. They say that, they, she said in the letter, she said that they, they, um, they think that she's living her life carelessly yeah. and they're afraid she's gonna bring something to the house and, and they're gonna get COVID-19. She says, what I'm seeing is what appears to be a breakdown in my family. Right, I feel like, you know, the word of God says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Yeah, yeah. And so um, the temptation for her could be because of her p being impassioned mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. is to try to manipulate or control the situation. And what really we need to be doing is letting love uh, be the force behind, you know, the way that we treat people, especially honoring her mother and her father yeah. who are at a different age bracket than she is, <laughs> right? right? More susceptible uh -huh. to illness uh -huh. and being aware that, you know, this is their decision. Yeah. Unfortunately, you'll have to respect it. Mm -hmm. You want to shy away from trying to manipulating the situation mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. controlling them by, well, if you're not going to let me come around, then I'm going to just ignore you or, or treat you in a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's really not love. Mm -hmm. Be prayerful, but be intentional in the way that you deal with your parents in an honoring way mm -hmm. and respecting because truthfully, it is a bigger deal to the older community sure. and demographics, Absolutely. especially African-American, uh, you know, uh, older African-Americans are, are much more susceptible to oh, uh, yeah. the effects of COVID-19. Yeah. Because of things like uh, sugar diabetes. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, some Underlying of health conditions of all kinds. High blood pressure, all those things. Well, that's more about seeing the signs. Yeah. I mean, if you know the signs and you know that that's the demographic you're in for whatever reason, you got to respect that or else bad sure. things can happen. Same as the signs we see toward the end of time. If you see them and ignore them, that's not going to take you any place good. <laughs> yeah. So moving forward with COVID-19 still around the world, with its arms wrapped around the world, uh, uh, closing in very tight, what, what's your last message that you give to people? We've only got 50 seconds, all we got left. What do you say in 50 seconds to give people hope? Bill, I would say <laughs> that from Romans 14, uh, this Paul puts it into a perfect perspective for me. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And I think no matter what age you are, and that's what puts it into perspective and gives us a level playing field. No matter what, I belong to Jesus and I want to live for him. We'll leave it there. Yep. That yes. no, noting to our audience that these same fine ministers will be back again next week. So make sure you tune in. Till then, I'm Bill Harris. We'll see you next time. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.